yeah, we're pretty familiar with each other. So uh, we had a chance to skate in those small groups for uh, for a while. So um, yeah, like I said, we should be familiar. So we had we had some fun together and um, you know tried to prepare as best we could, but at the same time uh, you know talk about things. And we have a short period of time here to get ready. So um, hopefully that'll uh, that'll help moving forward. Stay on. Sid, you've obviously won a lot of championships, a lot of different types of championships. This would, this would be very different than anything. Um, how much does it mean to you, to Gino, to Tanger, to the guys that are in your core to just keep winning championships? Yeah, I mean, you know, you have, uh, you know, a career or a short window in your career to, to be able to do that. Um, you know. Anytime you get uh, an opportunity to play, play for the Stanley Cup, you want to try to take advantage of it. It's not easy, but um, certainly it's a great feeling. And we've uh, we felt it before and we know what it takes and uh, we've got a great opportunity. So, um, yeah, I think that uh, that's your goal every year. And, um, you know, we're in a position to, to compete for it and uh, we've got to find a, find a way to get, uh, get it done. Mike? He said, I uh, appreciate you making some time for us. Um, my question's about Jake. Um, obviously, there's been a lot of discussion about him and his possible return here. Uh, as someone who's worked out with him, how does he look? Does he look close to the 40-goal scorer who was on pace for his second straight 40-goal season, or what do you expect from him when you guys resume? Yeah, I think just, you know, it always takes a little bit of time, but, um, you know, he's looked really good in the skates. He looks really comfortable, um, strong. I think the fact that uh, he has been able to skate for a good good chunk of time here uh, will definitely help, but um, he looks really good. So for somebody who had, um, you know, as much of a layoff as he did, I think he's done a great job of rehabbing and, and making sure that uh, he's ready to go. So he looks, he looks strong right now. Seth Rohrbaugh. Hi, right, Sid. Appreciate your time. Um, just... How good did it feel to have a, a normal practice or as close to a normal practice after four months? And um, what have the four, past four months been like for you? I mean, you're someone who's kind of uh, really committed to your routine and there's not, been nothing but close to routine the past four months. Yeah, I mean, it's it's great to get back. Um, you know, I think we're we're all going to take a few days here to get used to this, um, this kind of new, uh, new reality for us as far as, you know, testing and um, all the social distancing and everything like that that'll happen here at the rink it's it's something that we'll have to adjust to a bit but i think once we get used to that it'll just kind of become uh our new normal and and it kind of has i think away from the rink but you know just figuring all that stuff out is important um the last four months it's probably hard to, uh, to put into a a short coat i mean it's you know it's been challenging i think uh you know it's been challenging for everybody different ways but um you know i think as far as preparing to play i think it's it's forced me to, to be a little bit creative and um just making sure you know you try to find ways to stay ready best you can uh, given the situation but um you know that being said I'm, I'm happy to be to be back and you know to be preparing for uh you know for you know the plan or the, the playoff or whatever you want to call it steven wino Hey, Sid, uh, this is, the, I guess, the closest thing you guys have had to this was the World Cup in 2016. What do you, how do you compare your feeling now to then and just the kind of gearing up with a short training camp for meaningful games after a lot of time off? Yeah, I think, uh, I think just like you said, it's, it's very similar to that where um, you kind of have a short abbreviated training, uh, training camp and then you're, you're right into it. So, um, yeah, you just, you, you've got to be, You've got to be ready, but you also have to understand that uh, you've just got to get better with every game. And, um, you know, it's just about, you know, getting momentum and getting better every day. And uh, whether it's training camp or, or game one, you just have to have that mentality. So uh, I think everyone's had different experiences that can, can help them in this case. But uh, it's definitely got that, that feeling of, uh, of a sprint for sure. Wes Crosby. Hey, Sid, sorry for the Zamboni in the background. Um, but, uh, obviously you guys were missing a few guys out there today, uh, specifically with, with Patrick Hornquist. I know that 
you and others have talked about the energy that he brings in every practice and every game. Just how much does that miss just to start camp here? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, everybody knows Horny and what he brings, um, you know, on and off the ice. So, um, you know, I think it's always noticeable when he's not there. But that being said, I think, you know, there is good energy today. Guys are excited to be back, um, back together, especially. I mean, we were all here, but a lot of us, uh, you know, weren't able to, to spend time together just based, based on the small groups and the timing and all that stuff. So um, it's just nice to, to be all together and have a bit of normalcy that way. Jenna Harner. Hey, Sid, I just asked Jason this, but is it kind of complicated to balance everything right now in terms of the obvious excitement to be back on the ice and be gearing up for the Stanley Cup playoffs, but at the same time with all the seriousness of whatever, you know, everything that's going on right now? Yeah, it's just an adjustment. I think uh, you just have to make the best of it and you've got to be able to to adapt and adjust, you know, and make sure that, uh, you know, kind of, you know, the safety is is most important of, of everybody and everyone's health. And um, that's, you know, that's something I think we always have in the back of our mind. It's just something that we have to be a little bit more aware of right now. So um, that'll take some, some getting used to, but I think other than that, um, you know, this will just become our new normal and, and uh, we'll learn to handle it and, uh, you know, to find our routines and everything that kind of comes with, you know, along with preparing. We'll take a couple more here. Dayon, go ahead. Sid, when you see the the way the NHL, the NHL Players Association reached the agreement that they did um, as quickly and as apparently amicably uh, as they did, there seems to be a real determination to move forward, including through this. How much does that mean to you? Because there's, you know what I mean? There's people who say, just forget it. Just go ahead to next season. How much does it mean to you that everybody's pushing through this? Yeah, I mean, it's... You know, it's just a matter of everyone working together and, and finding ways to um, do our best to, to be safe and, and to be able to play. Um, you know, whether you're a player or a fan, I think you you know you miss the game and, and you want to be able to play, but you also have to understand the seriousness of, of what's going on around you. So I think, uh, you know, everyone, you know, was just trying to find a balance for that. And, uh, you know, we're able to, to make it work. Mike DeFabo. Um, Sid, Sid, you know, I, I understand that it was just a precaution that these nine players were had to load out, but, um, you know, elsewhere, teams have had to shut down their training camp, and there, I, I believe, are three Canadians who tested positive. What's your level of optimism, considering all of that, that the NHL will be able to complete its plan and award a Stanley Cup? Yeah, I'm optimistic. I think, you know, it'll be uh, an important time here the next next few weeks um you know to make sure we're doing our best to, to stay out of trouble that way but i think um you know we're we're getting tested here uh every second day i think it is so um everyone's on top of it and, and making sure that you know we're social distancing and all that stuff so um you know we're doing everything we can to avoid it and uh you know hopefully that's you know that's able to be a success and we can get to the bubble healthy Seth, go ahead with one last question. Uh, Sid, um, you know, Mike Sullivan's talked a lot about having like web meetings or, or video chats for you know, team concepts, power play, PK, what have you. Um, what have the conversations been like with, among, amongst the boys, amongst the group, uh, whether it's text messages or phone calls, anything like that? You know, what has it been like just trying to keep in touch over the past four months? Yeah, I think those, I mean, those calls helped a lot. I mean, guys were um, fairly scattered there for a bit. so. Um, you know, when you're used to seeing guys all the time and, and, uh, you know, it, just with everything that was happening, I think everyone just, you know, trying to look out for each other and make sure everybody's good, you know, wherever they were. So uh, I think having those calls once a week, you know, besides the, you know, the video and the systems part, I think it was nice just to connect with everybody that way. Um, and then I think as things kind of ramped up and, you know, the last month or so, no one, um, you know, will be close to getting a deal done we started to get guys back and you know you, you see some guys and you get in the small groups and things you know start to become a little bit more normal that way but uh, i think those i think those meetings were great not only just to kind of keep your mind engaged but also just to, to stay connected with all the guys so that was a you know a big positive i think for us